So this morning, uh, we know that here at Mount Zion, we've been talking about seasons. Pastor Lauren talked on Sunday about seasons, talked about uh, ways to prepare for the seasons. And we know, uh, as he reminded us, there's the natural way to do that, where we prepare for whatever season it is. I know for me, it's getting out my warm clothes, right? Taking them, my, I have another closet where I keep them all, bringing them all in, saying, oh boy, here we go. We got to prepare for the cold. So we do different things. We have our, our different um, rituals, or our different, you know, traditions that we do to prepare for seasons. And what I put up here today is that there are some seasons you just can't prepare for. Now, we know as we learned on Sunday that God prepares us ahead of time. He gives us the word. He says that um, he's going to tell us uh, ahead of time. He's telling us about this new day. But we can't always be exactly still prepared. A good example I can give you uh, of that uh, is when we have children. So when you have a baby shower and you're getting prepared and you're like, oh my gosh, I need all this stuff, right? And you're getting the crabs and you're getting all this stuff. And then the baby comes, you've got the nursery set up, everything's perfect, you got the little clothes hanging up. And then, I don't know, maybe there's just some naturals in there. I know, but for me, when that baby comes, it's like, oh, what? I thought I was prepared. Well, I was prepared with the stuff. But I don't know if there's really a way to be prepared for a season like that. And I think it's the same in whatever season of life we're in. Fast forward, the other season I can use as an example, a natural example in myself, is being a mother-in-law. Okay, I've read a lot about it, how to be a good one, how to be a bad one. I'm trying to prepare. But until you're one, you're never really prepared, right? And so it's these dynamics that God takes us through in these seasons of life that we say we can't always be prepared. And that's why it's so important that we prepare ourselves in God so that he has us prepared that no matter what our season does, we're able to hold on to him. We're able to believe for those promises. We're able to know no matter what, God's still the same. He doesn't change season to season. He stays the same. And that's our constant in our life. And this story that we read today, I chose this story because it gives us some good examples of things that we're talking about uh, today and about this whole concept of how important it is uh, for us to believe the word of God, not only just to hear it, but to be able to really put it in our hearts and to believe what we're hearing. So we're going to go over this story that we just read. Now, it happened in Iconium that they went to, together to the synagogues of the Jews and spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and the Greeks, believed. This was a new beginning. This was a new day for them. Paul and Barnabas were going out. They were preaching something they had never heard before. They were preaching about this guy named Jesus and this new way. And their whole goal was to get people to believe. And that's what this says, is that both Jews and the Greeks believed. So there were the Jews that had to change their mindset. They had to, believe, they had to uh, really push themselves out of their comfort zones to believe this new way. And then there were the Greeks, or we see that as the world, who had never heard the word preached. And they heard it, and they believed. And it, I liken this to um, the scripture in John, where Jesus did his first miracle, where the disciples believed in Jesus, but they never really had seen a miracle yet. And it says this Beginning of signs, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. So they believed him, that he was who he says he was, that he took them, he trained them. But when he, they saw this miracle, the Bible says they believed in him. There's something about experiencing God for yourself. Oh, you just believe in him. Not only did I believe that he was going to come through in that situation, but he did, and he did in a mighty way, and that helps us to believe in him. And that's exactly what this is uh, depicting here in this scripture, that these disciples of his that had been with him saw his glory, and they believed in him. Continuing on with our story, 
I put, they believed him or not. So here Paul and Barnabas are preaching. And it says, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. That's just like human nature. You know what? I don't like this new way. So I'm not only not going to go along with it, but I'm going to see how many people I can get on my side. Right? And it says poison their minds. Wow, that's a strong word. I'm thinking about when in our lives have something happened where somebody would poison your mind? Maybe talking about another person. Maybe something they didn't like what you were doing. Right? They just, do you, do you know someone like that? They're just Anya and Anya and Anya and Anya. You're like, ah, go away. So they were poisoned in their minds, in their thinking. And that's the day we live in where it's our thinking that's being attacked. Everything, everywhere we go, it's how do you think? What do you believe, right? And so in this case, this is what it said. And I put the scripture in Romans here, but they have not uh, obeyed the gospel. We know that not everyone is going to believe. And sometimes when they don't believe and they don't want things changed like the Jews in this case, they're going to try to get everybody else on their side. Whoops. Okay, make sure. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done in their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews heart sided with the apostles and when the violent attempt was made by both the gentiles and the jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them i put over here we know what we know so for those jews hey we know what we know and we're not changing that's it <laughs> right a little stubborn they're like nope that's not it and so we see these two sides but what did the disciples do when things got heated when people were trying to poison minds, what did the disciples do? They stayed there, the Bible says, a long time. They didn't run away. And they did signs and wonders, just as Jesus has told them to. So they weren't scared away by the non-believers. They weren't scared away about those people coming against them. They stood up to them, and they stood up boldly to them. And then we have this split. Then it says in verse 5, now an attempt was made to go after them and stone them. So they were always talking boldly, but they were always getting persecuted for it. Now we live in a time where maybe not people are picking up rocks to stone us, but if they don't like what we're going to say, they're going to either try to kick us out or they're going to have something to say, right? And so that's nothing that we're not used to in our time. It's very similar. And in verse 8, we read about the new way. So what happened is they start to stone them, and so they took off to a new city. The Bible says, I didn't read those verses in between. And they got to Lystra. So in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observed him intently, and seeing that he had faith to be healed, he said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet, and he leaped and walked. So now the disciples are about to get stoned. They take off from Iconium. And here they are in a new city where, again, they're promoting this new way. But in this city, they believed a little bit differently than they did in Iconium. The first thing that we read happens after they've been preaching and talking is there's a man there. There's a supernatural healing. And we know from Tuesday morning, above all things, God can just speak that word and we're healed, right? <laughs> Amen. What a beautiful example. And this is what we say every week as we pray. We believe it. As we pray for our baskets and we lay hands, we believe just like this man, crippled from birth. Can you imagine? Can you imagine all of a sudden just stood up and walked? So this was this new way introduced to Listeria. Um, and so I ask a question here, how did that man get that faith? Isaiah says, who has believed our report? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. The emphasis being on the believed. So a man hears something he had never heard before. Now granted, he had been crippled from the beginning. 
So he was probably desperate, probably tried everything. I would think he and his parents went everywhere trying to get him help. And here he hears a message, there's somebody who can heal you. Let me tell you about this Jesus. And, and the Bible says it was, he believed it. It was by that faith. That's how simple putting this scripture into to practice is for us. He believed, and that faith swells up within us. Why? Because we hear that word. Easy as that. Now when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices saying in Lysonian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. So what happens, these people, they didn't believe like the Jews, they believed like the Greeks, because they were Greeks, right? So they believed in the Greek gods. What were the Greek gods? I looked up pictures of these guys, just because I was curious. I know I studied them way back in the day, but I wanted to see what they looked like. But they are just men with stuff in their hands, is what they are. Statues and idols, right? That's who Zeus was, and Hermes too. They were these statues holding different things. And so as they looked at Paul, they go, wow, these statues have come to life. And they literally thought that's what happened. Can you imagine? Instead of believing what they had just heard... Instead of believing the preaching, they said, oh, no, this is awesome. These gods that we've been worshiping all these years have come to life. And this reminds me of preaching to somebody or talking to somebody, and they're like, oh, no, 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 you don't get it. It's because of this situation that this happened, or it's because of this medicine, or it's because of uh, this that that happened. It's not because of God. But we're always wanting to justify it, however that person believes. And that's what they were doing here. This is the way we've been taught. This is the way we believe. And so this is what we think, that the gods have come down to help us. And so now they're sacrificing to these men, thinking they're Zeus and Hermes. Now somebody might say, it's not Hermes, it's Hermé. That's a different Hermes. Aramaic is the French pronunciation. He says, Hermes, there's Hermes, the God, has come to life right in front of us. And what do they say? But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran among the multitudes, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We are also men with the same nature as you, and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, all things that are in them, who in bygone generations allowed the nations to walk in their own ways. They're trying to tell them. It reminds me on the way uh, over here, uh, Glenn and I were talking about these books they make that um, they're children's books, and they say, oh, you know, you need to um, really protect and, and really think about Mother Earth, and, you know, you are the wind, and all of these kind of nature books. And all the while, that's okay to say that, but I always say back, but who made the wind, right? <laughs> who made the earth? And this is kind of what they're saying here. They're saying, why are you paying attention to these useless things when the living God is right in front of you? And sometimes that's what God is saying to us. Why are you worrying about this inanimate object or this relationship or this person you can't control when I'm almighty God and I control the whole world? Amen? That's what they're saying in this. And they're saying who in by God generations allowed the nations to walk in their own eyes. God does allow things. And because God allows things, what I find is people think it's fine. Just because God allows something to happen does not mean he approves of it, right? It does not mean that he's not going to do something about it because he always does something about it. He just has his own time and his own season in which to do it. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without a witness that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. 
the apostles are trying to say there was a time where God had forgotten, but now look what he's done. He's left us, but he's left us all of these good things. And he says, fruitful seasons, where? In our hearts. Food and gladness. Trying to share the excitement of God with them. And what could they, they couldn't, they couldn't change their minds. They couldn't get it past their mindset. And they went after them anyway. It didn't work. And then the Jews from uh, Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul, dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. So after that didn't go over so well, they finally, I can, now if you can imagine this, here are these Jews from this city, Antioch and Icomian. I didn't look up how far they were, but in Israel, everything's fairly close by. It's not like this huge, humongous place, but they followed them. They followed them to poison some other minds. They followed them so that they could get what they wanted, and that was to stone them. So they followed them, they dragged them out, and Finally, they left that city. And it also says that not only did they stone him and they dragged him out, but they talked all those people out of what they had just seen. So they poisoned a whole other group of minds on the way. Boy, when people want to be against, they can rise up strong-willed and be against, right? They were after Paul and Barnabas. So what did he do? He went to the next city. And when they had preached the gospel to the city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must go through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. What? It says they return to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch? They went back to that place? Are you kidding me? Here he had gotten stoned. They were chasing him. And what did they do? They went back. It kind of reminds me of, I'm like, well, you know, how could somebody like even do that? I think I'd be scared to do that, to get stoned again. But then I thought about it. I go, well, it's kind of like going to my friends or the workplace or whatever and preaching Jesus and getting shot down. And then what do I do the next day? Go right back and start preaching again and get shot down again. And what do we do? We go right back and we're preaching again. We do the same thing, don't we? We go right back into that. And what I love what this scripture says here is he said, and they strengthen the disciples. So even though there was this loud group of people against them, there were disciples there. God had planted people there. And so Paul and Barnabas, they knew that. And they said, we need to go back and strengthen the brethren. And we need to go back and strengthen those disciples. And then he says, we must go through many tribulations to enter the kingdom of God. That's not new news to any of us, right? If we're going to do God's work the way he has called us to do it, there's going to be tribulations. There's going to be people that want to throw those stones. There's going to be those that don't want to hear what we have to say. And there's going to be those that try to vex our mind. How quickly our minds can become fearful. I was thinking just the other day, something had happened, and right away I'm like, oh! For a split second, and I go, whoa, wait a minute. I'm not going, (gasps) letting that fear sink in. I'm going to remember the word of the Lord. I'm going to believe the word of the Lord. And as quickly as that little thought can come in, God can take it out with the word of God. And that's what they were so good at doing. That's what Paul and the Apostles that he traveled with were so good at being able to encourage the people in a very tough time, in times of tribulation. So when they had appointed the elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. From there they sailed to Antioch where they had been commended for the grace of God for the work which had been completed. So what did 
these guys do, they finished the work. They went, they appointed people in those churches, and then it says they prayed and fasted. I love that. Because they knew it was impossible without that prayer to be able to do what God had for them to do. And it says they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had been completed. I want to be one of those. I want to be one of those who says, well done, my good and faithful servant, right? That's who I want to be. How about you? Yeah? Amen. And so that's why it's so important that we follow the word. And today what this chapter is really speaking to us about is believing. They heard it. They believed it. They heard it. They believed it. They acted upon it. And for us, when we hear the word and we believe the word, that's what opens that door for God to give us that faith that we just heard. That's how we can believe the report. When Isaiah says, who has believed the report? I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. I want to be one of those ones. I want to be the one that believes the report of the Lord. And in 27 and 28, it says, And now when they had come and gathered in the church together, they reported all that God had done with them, and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. This is a good report. I love this. What happened after they had done all the work? I'm sure they're sitting around the table eating figs and bread or whatever they ate, talking about, wow, was that cool? Wasn't that cool when that guy got healed? Wasn't it great when they um, answered the altar call? Wasn't that fun? The Lord showed up right on time, and they're talking about all their evangelism and all the good things that have happened. And it says they stayed there a long time. They were so excited about the work that the Lord has done. And that's how it is for us. That's how it's going to be for us in this coming up new beginning. As people come into the church, as God opens the doors for us to open our mouth and say, it's time to believe. Amen? It's time to believe for this new day and this new beginning. Because we've got something to believe in. Not just to believe for, but to believe in. And that should be the, uh, our prayer this morning in our hearts, is that, Lord, stir that up in me. Stir that faith up. Stir that belief. Even as Bonnie said, stir up that word that God has given us, that God has given you personally. Or if you're here this morning and maybe you're a little low on that today, it's okay. Because you're hearing the word right now. And right now you can say, Lord, I believe that you can move mountains. I believe the impossible is possible. And when we look at the things that God talks about, I didn't add, put all the scriptures because there are so many of them, but what comes when we believe? Well, the first thing that comes, there's a, a scripture um, that we talk about here that's coming. What sets them apart? Believe. It says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. That's how easy it is for us. And then he says, but the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who what? Who believe. That faith comes first. Before we have that faith, we believe. And then in this example here, but when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. And the man's little girl had died, and the disciples said, don't bother him, she's already dead. That didn't matter to Jesus. He said, don't fear, she's going to be well. Don't let anybody tell you that situation is impossible, that guy's already sick, don't worry about it, no. Doesn't matter if the situation looks dead or not. We serve the resurrected God. We serve the one that can resurrect any situation that we have. And what comes from believing? These are some of the things that I just listed. We know that salvation comes. He who believes and baptized, right? We know that healing comes from believing. We just read our rest, love, the miracles, signs, and wonders came to those who what? Those who believed. 
And we know what we believe for, for this faith. We believe in eternal life. All things are possible to those who believe. God's promises to those who believe. All of these things, whatever it is that's on our hearts and minds today, these are the scriptures. And look up these. Look them up. Put them on your mirror. That's what I do. I hang my scriptures up. Right? So that they're always there where I can be encouraged upon them. And in him you also trusted after you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit and promise. And then I just have a couple more here. And again, these are just scriptures to encourage you. Jesus said, if you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And also Daniel in the lion's den. It says, Now king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den. No injury whatsoever was found on him because what? He believed in his God. And this is his commandment that we should believe on his name, his son of Jesus Christ, love one another as he given us commandment. I didn't realize this was a commandment, to be honest, till I look at the scripture and I go, whoa. It says, and this is his commandment that we should believe. So not only is it our choice believe, but God is telling us this morning, this is a commandment I want you to believe. Because it's something about following the commandments. We all want to be able to do that and be pleasing to God. Even if it's, I believe, help my unbelief. We want to put ourselves and our hearts in the mode this morning that, Lord, we're going to believe you. Amen?